Hey there, StarCraft fans. It's Falcon Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft Predator Remastered. Today, it's going to be a fairly sick Falcon Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of White Raw. It's going to be White Raw versus Peggy Seung here on Heartbreak Ridge. And it's a Carbot cast. To uh, left side of Heartbreak Ridge, we have a purple Terran player. It is Peggy Sung. And the right side, we got ourselves a Protoss player. He is white. It is White Raw from Ukraine. <clears throat> They've been talking about something in game? 10 game? I don't know, man. I looked up Peggy Sung on the Brew War Wikipedia, but I couldn't find any information for him. So, eh. Are you the real White Raw? Yes, says old White Raw. It's a PVT here. Okay. ZZGG, says Peggy Sung. Oh, who has 430 APM? Maybe he's a Korean player. I don't know. But if you have any information on who this is, let me know in the comments. $22,500 in cash prizes for TSL. Team Liquid Star League back in 2008. Is that high? Is this Peggy Sung? <laughs> play, says White Rod. You should play in it. Come hang out with us. Oh, no Korean, no Chinese. That's right. It was all European and like Americans and South Americans and stuff. Oh, says Peggy Sung. I wonder if he's Korean. His APM's insane. Like, very few foreigner players have 400 APM back in this time. It was like an 08 game when this was played, right? If it's during TSL. A uh, really fun tournament, too. It's like Star League, says White Raw. Yes, it is. So, yeah, as you can tell, I am losing my voice. I do this about once a year. Uh, I don't know. I'll get it checked out at the doctor here and see what they say. But this is why I have a buffer. If I lose my voice entirely tomorrow, I'll be able to uh, throw the buffer up. And we'll have some stuff ready for you. We don't miss days here on the Falcon Paladin channel. Even if I can't cast on that day, there's a cast ready to go. Yeah, so special super shout out to subscriber Nintendo. Uh, he was on the Sunday stream. He came and watched me on the Sunday stream a couple days ago here at youtube.com slash Falcon Paladin. I do Brood War live streams every Sunday at 11 a.m. Eastern, and he threw me a $50 donation over PayPal. So falconpaladin at gmail.com is the PayPal address if you want to do a one-time donation that way, if you're comfortable with that. And he said, this is to bribe you into doing a car cast. And I said, you know what, man? You got it. And I said, do you have any requests? And he said, sure, how about uh, Protoss? Something with Toss. And I said, okay, you let's do this thing. So I found a White Raw game. Should be pretty fun here. Interested to see what's going to go on. Uh, White Raw might be a little bit outclassed by this Peggy Sung player. But we'll have to see. We'll have to see where this game goes. I don't know. I don't watch these before I cast them, right? So if you don't know Carbot, check him out. He's a really great YouTuber. He's currently doing a Diablo series, a Diablo series in his kind of cartoony style. He's doing an Elden Ring series as well. And he did a whole bunch of StarCraft stuff. A lot of it Brood War related. You know, making fun of Dragoon Pathing, for example. Right? So check him out. Just search uh, Carbot animation on YouTube. You'll find him. I'll put a link to his channel in the description too, but... Blizzard approached him a few years ago and said, Hey, do you want to make a skin for StarCraft Remastered? That's just entirely in your style. And he said, Sure. And here it is. And you can purchase it yourself. I think it's 20 bucks. Maybe it's less now um, if you own StarCraft Remastered. And you can get this kind of fun cartoony thing too. Some people don't like it. I understand that. Uh, some people are like, rah, rah, This doesn't look like real StarCraft. I can't tell anything what it is. And I don't know. Maybe it's just because I'm already familiar with Carbot. Like everything, I, I can translate it in my mind what it looks like and what it is so i don't have that problem but i understand people that do anyway hope you're enjoying this nintendo thanks again for the very uh, excellent and generous donation and we are getting this going so yeah dragoon shows up and i mean peggy ying sung is making a tank so that'll be enough to shove this dragoon away interesting opening here just kind of walling off yeah, and the, they can't even jump on this because of the block. I like it. I like it quite a bit. I don't know if they want to stick around, and they don't. They're going to back it out. Siege mode is on the way, so that should be able to chase these Dragoons away as soon as that upgrade is complete here. Uh, repairing the SCVs, but it does go down anyway. Thanks to the firepower here. This Marine, I love the run animation on Marines. Hop, 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 hop. 
right? And they're gonna... Okay, just a couple shots off on that Nexus, which is hilarious. On the other side, robotics facility coming in. You know, just in case it could be spider mines. We know how PVT works, there we go, don't we? We're very familiar with that stuff. So, siege mode comes up. The siege mode is heard by White Raw, and he backs out. You can hear that. And when that comes up, that means Dragoons run, run away. Like, if you're a Protoss player, <laughs> and you hear the siege mode, and you don't run your Dragoons in the opposite direction, you're doing it wrong. Very traditionally doing it wrong here. So, tanks set up to protect the command center from landing. I don't know, but okay, yeah, just kind of sacrificed. A Dragoon there, not super hot. Now, Arboretic Rage is a weird map. Your expansions aren't super great. Your natural's nice. But, like, your third base is going to be up here. It's kind of a long way away if you want to defend it over ground. But that's where Whitebird's going. As he knows, you got to out-expand the Terran if you're going to beat him. And this Peggy Song person, you know, he's either Chinese or he's Korean, based on the response to that conversation we had earlier about TSL. And I assume he's a Korean. So, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I have a ton of replays. Ton of replays between White Raw and Korean players. I am curious to see how he does here today. This might be a Protoss loss, but you know, Nintendo didn't specify a Protoss win necessarily, but it is a Carball game, so he should be happy with it. Turrets coming up in case, you know, Reaver shenanigans are in the future. So far, not so much. Not uh, not much at all. I mean, we're looking at an observatory, sure. But no robotic support bay, third base, you know, just trying to macro, not so much tech on the player right now. Dragoon trying to make sure any kind of a move out is detected. Any sign of trying to take a third base. The Dragoons know about it because you got to come through them first. Upgrades uh, for vehicle weapons on the way from the Terran player. And let's see if we get anything else in that production tab for the Protoss other than, yeah, no, just macro style things. I'm just making Dragoons. That's what he wants right now. I don't see any indication that he's going to go for Zealots. It's really just Dragoons right now, huh? Because if you want Zealots, you want a Citadel of a Dune, and there we go. So Citadel coming in now at 7 minutes. Interesting timing for that one. I like the turret placement up here on this high ground behind the natural base. That is really good for dealing with shuttles that try to fly up there and maybe drop Dragoons and harass your mineral line, and it's super annoying. But a turret up there shuts that down pretty nicely. Yeah, so I don't know. This is my annual Falcon loses his voice thanks to, like, some viral infection that he picks up. Uh, I don't think it's covid I don't think it's anything super bad. It's kind of a viral uh, congestion, coughing, losing your voice kind of a deal. But yeah, if you've been a subscriber of mine for a couple years, you remember a couple times this happens to me, right? Around this time of year, this pops up again, and I'm just uh, not a happy camper. But like I said, I can hack out a couple casts and let the buffer deal with the rest. Mm, yep, charge, or rather, leg enhancements is on the way. Got a few vultures sharking around here with their very fancy goggles and bandanas in Carbot's animation style. I like it. It does they have so much more personality than the regular illustration style in regular remastered. Which has way more personality than they have in OG Brood War because you can hardly tell what's going on with those bikes at all. Like, I don't think I knew there were pilots on the Vulture bikes for like a few years after Brood War came out. I'm just like, okay, they're inside a cockpit. No, they're riding it. They're outside. Their heads are poking up. Very brave of them, honestly. They're wearing full body suits, though, normally. But, uh, yeah, you get in the car bot. They're just. They're in nice little bandanas, two rags across their head, blocking, there you go, good positioning here by White Raw. This is great Dragoon positioning by White Raw, very, very impressive stuff. The vultures are trying to find places to go, to get run bys, trying to throw down spider mines, but White Raw's just cleaned that all up. I mean, that whole run did nothing. There are no spider mines left over here. There were no probes dead at all. White Raw's doing okay, he really is, third base. Third command center is on the way here from Peggy Sung. Hey guys, Sung. I don't know. Science facility has little beakers on the side. I just love the details. I do. It's really fun stuff here. Uh, yeah. See, there's a big old telescope on the observatory. Getting a forward and Templar archives and a Stargate. So okay, we're going for some Arbiter play here. No Reavers at all. 
So it seems like White Ra's not interested in any special tactics today. Which I find interesting. He does love He does love reverse shenanigans. It's not, you know, it's not like okay, he is making a shuttle. So he's gonna have some kind of special tactics. It's not gonna be reverse stuff, but maybe zealot bombs, maybe yeah, and trying to drop those dragoons on that high ground there, that'd be good too. Yeah, so this third base is in trouble. All of a sudden these dragoons are pushing in. And Peggy Sung is like, oh boy. Uh shoot, what do we do about this? This tank is kind of covering this area, so maybe the dragoons don't want to go too far in here. Can they sneak along the bottom side maybe and avoid that tank shot? That's a good question. It seems like White Rod doesn't want to be doing that, so he's not going to. Storm's on the way, Arbiter Tribunal coming in too. Yeah, yeah. Everything is pretty standard along the PVT lines right here in this game. Excellent stuff. Fourth base. No. Yes, fourth base is coming up here from White Raw at the 12 o'clock. While the third base is running, he's got to keep ahead in bases or he's going to die. The mech is more cost efficient than he is. End of discussion. Caron Boost coming in to deal with the Arbiters, to deal with the shuttles that are going to be flying around here too. Vehicle plating upgrades coming in. Yeah, both players just, you know, upgrades are looking okay for the Terran. Protoss still working on their first, their first ones. It's usually how this works. Protoss isn't as concerned about upgrades early compared to Terran, but they will get there the longer the game goes on. Yeah, this is, uh, I don't know. Cannons are coming in before the Nexus finishes, which is nice. So a small number of Vultures really can't do much about this, but if you showed up with like 10 or 12 Vultures, they could probably burn these cannons down pretty quickly. Shut that base down. And yeah, if I'm Peggy Sung, I want to check this out. I want to see if there's a base up there. See what damage I can do. But for now, he's just kind of patrolling around. He might be heading up north now. He's setting some Goliaths up there for sure. I love that there's beakers and flasks kind of painted on the side of the science vessel. And it's got E equals MC squared on there. Okay, catching some transferring probes is pretty hot stuff. Do the vultures run out? Sure. They're willing to die to kill all of these probes. And they're going to kill a bunch of probes there. That's not bad. It's another dead one there. So it is 46 probes to 68 SCVs. Whoa. Oh, but a storm drop. Oh, the special tactics. Oh, the revenge. One good massacre of workers deserves another. And Peggy Sung's down to 55 workers. He just evened up the odds there so fast. Wow. Okay, so this shuttle's going to die. I think it's going to fly into missile turret land and not be able to get out. Yeah, that's a problem. Okay. All right. Yeah, so he just unloads. Yeah, dies to that. Zealot says, I must avenge my shuttle friend. Take down this missile turret while being shot in the back. Oh, I can't quite do it, but it is burning. So maybe it'll burn down. Maybe Peggy, Peggy Song won't pay attention to that. Oh my gosh, another expansion. From right, right, bottom right side. He's only down three workers now. Remember when there was a massive advantage for Peggy Song and then two storms at this third base just absolutely wrecked. That was so good. That was such a good drop. That's the special tactics right there. It doesn't have to be Reavers. Which is, you know, shuttle shenanigans that White Raw really loves. Alright, so officially three basing Terran. It's time to move out, says Pei Gye Sung. I don't know how to say that. Gye? Is it Gye? Gye? I think that's Sung, that's Pa, probably. I don't know. Pagia Sung. If he knows there's a base here, I'm not sure if he scanned it or not, but wiping that out would be pretty good. Again, anything we can get the brand newest source. Oh, he's just expanding. The new source of income for your enemy, you're going to be a pretty happy camper. Stasis coming in, EMP on the way too. More Arbiters happening here. Wires up 177 to 149 total supply. He has the bigger army. Maybe a recall into the main base would be pretty hot. He's getting hallucination for recalls too. We don't see hallucination used a ton in PVTs, but it can be really effective and really make your drops just that much more potent. I think is how you will describe that. So here we go. Zealots just is walking into spider minefields. I don't, this is not a place to engage White Raw. He's backing out. He cleared out some spider mines. He killed some vultures, but okay, good storm. Yeah, I'm all right. That was fine. Bruised up a Goliath, killed a tank, maybe. But recall, there we go. Now recall is coming in. So we can't recall yet. Oh, look what he found. 
Look what he found. He found the bottom right base of White Ross. White Ross setting up some stuff to defend his fourth base at the 12 o'clock because if he loses that and he loses this, he probably loses the game. Got to watch out for that one. Top left base also technically belongs to White Raw. And this technically belongs to Peggy A. Sung, but White Raw needs an extra base on the Terran. So he's got to take something that technically belongs to the Terran eventually. And that's what we're looking at here. Is he trying to make a Zealot? That, that gateway's going to die. Yeah, man, this is plus two Siege Tank. Yo, Arclight Shock Cannon, 80 damage per hit. Bam. Thanks for coming. Thanks for coming, Gateway. I'm not sure why you're even allowed to complete construction there, actually. I love that PGA Sung's not interested in sending out anything else. He's just like, all right. Uh, actually, moving the tank closer would be pretty rad, but for some reason, not doing that. White Rose effectively maxed out. He's starting to float some cash here. He's working on upgrades, more pylons. As he's taking the top left base, dude, White Raw looking all right. He really is. I wonder if we're clumping up for a recall. As recall is done, there's an Arbor cruising in with enough energy for one. Let's see what we get here. Did he move in? Yeah, he moved in. Oh, that is so clumped. That's got to be a recall attempt. Maybe we get some uh, hallucination from multiple Arbiters here and then what? And the turrets don't know what to kill. Is that what this is? Is he going to do it? Come on. Hallucinate the Arbiters. We don't see that a lot. It's really super cool. It's a super cool move. Fleet Beacon on the way. Oh, is why we're trying to get into the carrier transition. Maybe. Oh, two Zealots. Probably got shuttled over here. Be my guess. Oh, there they are. Okay, so hallucinated arbiters in Garbot. I'm not sure I've seen this. Have we seen hallucinated arbiters in Carbot yet? We've seen everything else in Carbot, I think. Maybe not this one, though. Yeah, see, this one makes it in. And gets the recall off. Beautiful. Okay. Yeah, that works at pretty much perfection there. Storm. Dealing with the incoming vultures. Vultures are always the first to arrive. Dragoons picking those off quite nicely. Well, White Rod's going to lose this base in the bottom right. Yeah, the Vultures aren't really what you need to get rid of these Dragoons. It's going to be tanks. They have 2-2 two -two upgrades. Although, I don't know. Spider Mines are getting laid down, and it's a lot of Vulture attack. Okay, so there we go. Siege Tank's coming in as well. The Arbiter gets blasted while we're at it. This Arbiter just kind of hangs out. I'm kind of interested in that. Maybe they could have tried to come down here, attack the third base a little bit. But yeah, Peggy Sung is not good enough of a player that he's got his own Brood War page on Wikipedia, so you can't really expect perfection from this guy, right? But it is carriers. It is Los Carriers on the way here. Great EMP, great EMP. Didn't catch the Arbiters, though, which is kind of... I don't know. It's a good target, man. Oh, another great EMP there. Good stasis. Oh, catches more of couple of his zealots in there as well. White Rose got to back out. Too many siege tanks. It's plus three upgrades is so good on tanks. That extra five damage is amazing. Left that Arbiter behind. Not super hot. Still 320 APM for the Terran. About 200 for White Raw. And, yeah, the Terran's expanding bottom right now. So he's going to have half the map. And White Raw's going to have half the map. And at that point, White Raw says, okay. I don't think I can do traditional... Just have extra bases and win on the ground type fights here against this guy. So I gotta go for carriers. I could be way more cost efficient with carriers against Terran than I can with the other stuff. I like going ground. I'm fine with the Dragoon, Zealot, High Templar, Arbiter stuff. But if I can only get half the map against him, it's not gonna work. Long term, this is not a viable strategy for me. So I gotta get carriers and I gotta take advantage of what they could do. Plus, the carriers instantly make the tanks obsolete. Well, maybe not instantly make the tanks obsolete. Because usually, once the carriers show up, the Terran goes, Alright, fine. I can move out and maybe kill a base or two before the carriers can catch me. I love the Defensive Matrix animation too, one of my favorites from Carbot. It's nice. It's got a whirlwind. I like it a lot. 
173 to 151 supply. PK Sung in the lead because his superior ground army is wiping out the inferior ground army of White Raw because all of his money is going into carriers that are not really part of the battle right now. This could be bad. If this is just Peggy Sung shows up and kills this 12 o'clock and this top left, White Raw might just lose the game. Like, I don't know if he has an answer for that happening. He's making carriers, but they take 87 years to complete. Oh, I imagine he was probably just scanning. What was he scanning? Oh, right there. Okay, so he's got to know about the top left, though. If he did, I think he would send some vultures over and try to shut it down. So here's this kind of hybrid ground carrier army. So the Nexus 12 o'clock does die. The tanks need to go top left. They just do. They're running. Yeah, they hit. Go, 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 go. These guys are retreating. These two are heading over this way. They're going to siege up and try to wipe out this Nexus. But no, that really shouldn't happen because there's too much. Yeah. Too much ground army there from White Raw. So at this point, it's eight Goliaths at a time. P.A.G. Sung knows what he's dealing with here. He's going to pull the tanks back. Yeah, maybe send out, try to kill the natural. That would be cool. There's a lot of probes here that are very juicy targets. Top left base does get saved. White Rob might try to replant this 12 o'clock. He's got enough money for it. I don't know if he's sending a probe up here for that at all, but the carriers are like, okay. So solid EMP. It did. It caught all of the carriers there. That's big. That's a massive EMP, and they just don't want to fight. There's not enough of them to be too scary here, you know? There's only five, and losing this 12 o'clock was big for mineral income, right? And there's not a ton of gas there either for White Raw. He might just be kind of caught in this in-between land, and that's not where he wants to be. Plus one air weapons is coming in, so that's excellent stuff. And this ground army of what's left for White Raw. He's going hybrid. He's getting Dragoons and Zealots here. You know, he's got uh, plus three, plus three upgrades. It's a lot of turrets, man. It's three, three for the Mac. Just, uh, yeah, no shield upgrades here for the Protoss. It's a lot of tanks, man. And I know you're storming them, and that's fantastic. Uh, Zealots getting on those top ones, though. Okay, so the bottom ones are still big time problematic there. That is a huge group of dead Dragoons there. That guy defensive matrix his way to victory. And the Goliaths are just like, hey, if you want to poke your head out of your cave here, carriers will join you. If you want to fight us on open ground, we like doing that. What we don't like is when you're hiding from us on high ground, we can't hit. And there's a bunch of that here on this map, too. 12 o'clock base is getting replanted. Just got scanned. Hey, keep scanning over here just to see what's coming out, I guess. 173 to 157 supply. I just, I think the Terran's got it. I don't know. I don't want to call this, but yo, yeah, this Zealot thing, interestingly enough. So they just wiped out a carrier. Good stutter, really good stutter step, actually. That was great. Zealots didn't get too many hits there, and I think they really, really definitely wanted to. Yeah, focus down the carriers. Let the Dragoons do whatever they want at this point. Nice. Snipely done. Snipely done. I don't think that's a word at all. Siege tanks. Like, okay, you deal with the Goliaths. The tanks are going to be firing on your Nexus the whole time. Carriers very injured. Oh, my gosh. All six, six are still alive here, though, but they're so hurt. They're so hurt. 155 to 131 supply. White Raw, I just, he needs this base. He's not going to have it. Oh, these probes might die. And this top left base dying is just GG. He just, he needs, he needs half the map. Even with this carrier stuff he's doing, which has been pretty cost affectionate. And there we go. Gets the Nexus. He doesn't have enough Goliaths to kill these carriers at this point. But it hardly matters. This is really bad for White Raw economically. You can see his bank is all the way gone. He's only at 100 minerals now. He's got a bunch of carriers, but... The EMPs are hot. This 12 o'clock base is getting replanted, which is nice. But it's 151 to 132 supply. And just look how happy the income is all the way across here for the Terran player. It's looking great for him. And White Raw is, you know, got two mineral patches left at his third. His natural has nothing. His man has nothing. So he's long distance mining, trying to get enough minerals for the interceptors that he continually has to keep rebuilding here. It is the nature of carriers is you got to do that.
Yeah, I mean, 3-3 three, three Goliaths, man. He's not even very... Yeah, he's not even really attacking the bodies of the carriers. I keep waiting to see him do that, but he seems pretty happy just to kill the interceptors here, which... Is he killing them faster than they're being produced? I don't know, but White Rod doesn't have the money to keep producing this many interceptors. Look, he's got 19 minerals. He's making eight at a time, but like the next round is not going to be very good for him. Oh, none of that happened. GG. GG says White Raw rematch. Yeah, says Peggy Song. Let's rematch. That's so friendly. So two very friendly players there, and the winner is Peggy Song. Very nice. <laughs> very good game from him. And it always comes down to economics, doesn't it? I mean, White Rod needed this base if he was going to compete with ground. Couldn't get it. Switched over to carriers. Said, we'll split the map. And the Terran said, nah. How about I kill this and I kill this? And how about you have no money for carriers? And how about I just kick your butt? That was great. That was just excellently, just methodically executed there by Piegi Sung. One little recall inside the main base of White Rod didn't, or sorry, of Piegi Sung didn't do a whole lot, honestly. Would have liked to see more recalls. That was a beautiful storm drop here. That did. A, I mean, I think this game might have been over sooner if White Row had not executed this drop at the third base as well as he did. But at the end of the day, it's 57 to 27 workers. This base is toast. There's no income for White Row. He His carriers are his army. And he just doesn't have enough minerals to replace the interceptors that are constantly dying here. So it did seem like a calculated play there from Piagi Sung to attack the interceptors. Because he knew how starved... Excuse me. How starved uh, our guy... White Raw was going to be. So the Ukrainian does fall here today. You know, good player, not invincible. And that's fine, right? Nobody is. Nobody's invincible. Nobody, especially on my channel, is invincible. I haven't seen anybody ever win every single game I've ever cast of theirs on the channel. Maybe if there was a one-off, maybe some player I've only cast once. You know, in the thousands and thousands of StarCraft casts that I put out, and he won that game, and that was it. He's got a 1 0 record, but you know, anyone I've ever cast more than a couple times probably has a loss. So, yeah, that's a pretty under the weather Falcon cast for you today. Like I said, hit that like button. Let's check out this final score mm, 186,000 points for Peggy Sung, 186,000 points for White Roth. Just a 900 point difference between the two in favor of the Terran. Outproduced the Protoss, outkilled the Protoss. Structures raised. Yeah, 14 to 5 is pretty good there in favor of the Terran. And if the resources spent is this even in a PVT, it's just not going to work out for you. It's just not. That's really what it comes down to. Terran mech is too cost efficient. You just got to be the Zerg here if you're going to beat them. That's exactly what happened. So, well done. Like, fantastically, fantastically well done. From our guy, Pege Sung. I don't know if I have any more games from him. Maybe I'll look for some. But yeah, cool. So that right there is going to be it from me. This has been Falcon Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft Brood War Remastered. Go ahead and hit that like button. Hit that subscribe if you like what you saw and what you heard today. You can also catch me at Twitter, Facebook, Patreon, and Twitch. All at slash Falcon Paladin. And until next time, as always... Thank you so much for watching, and you take care of yourself.